what's fun about that? Yeah, that's not fun. <laughs> I have a question. Okay. Do you watch this when you're bored out of your mind? Say that again? Do you watch this when you're bored out of your mind and have nothing else to do? No, but everyone else will. <laughs> <laughs> Chastity has to do with, of course, the proper use of our sexuality. So when a person doesn't do that, and they do have sex before marriage, who gets hurt? Does anybody get hurt? I would, I would ask, who does not get hurt? Uh, and you can break it down. For one, the individual does hurt himself uh, because they're selling themselves short. Spiritually, they're cutting themselves off from God. Uh, and in a certain sense, God, his, his heart in a certain sense, is hurt by the fact that his children are turning away from him. Your future spouse, people say, well, Chastity, you know, what's fun about that? You know, that's no fun, but what's really no fun is having to look your bride in her eyes and say, I didn't wait for you. Or looking your groom in the eyes and said, I've been with this guy and this guy and this guy. I'm sorry, hon. That's not fun. Uh, uh, and so it, it hurts the future spouses with all of the diseases that are out there rampantly. You can, uh, many of the diseases right now are undetectable, so the vast majority of teens that have one are un unaware of it, and you can bring those into marriage undetected, give them to your wife and to your children, and so the families can be affected. Um, the divorce rates are so much higher for those who don't wait for marriage. Uh, if you sleep with a spouse um, before you marry him or her, you're three times as likely to divorce that person. Uh, and so society as a whole is really held together by the virtue of chastity and as the family goes so goes the nation uh, and so it's a worldwide uh, impact that this takes whether or not we foster this virtue or we don't and throughout history the world will depend on who man will be for woman and who woman will be for man and to each other uh, and so this is really the very framework of any healthy society father tell me uh, in your role as a priest do you run into those who have been hurt uh, what was the emotional there's, cost? There's, there's no question. As a, as a confessor, I have a privileged view into the interior lives of people, and I can certainly attest to what you're saying, Jason, that, there, uh, that y you never are happy in contradicting God and, because he ultimately wants what's good for you, and he wants that good because he loves us. There's no way you can be happy by contradicting him or his commandments. I think we, in an earlier program we brought out that there's a real distinction between pleasure, momentary pleasure, and lasting happiness. And I'm thinking that Jesus himself revealed the Beatitudes. And when that's translated, sometimes it said, blessed are those, blessed are the pure of heart, they're going to see God, blessed, blessed. Sometimes it's translated as happy are those, happy. In other words, we're made for true happiness, true blessedness. But it's not, it's going to be found in following what God has revealed. In other words, like following the maker's instructions, you know. Uh, you're going to be, you know, anything you, anything you purchase or have, it's got an instruction book that you follow the instructions, you know, you'll, you'll work. If you don't, don't be surprised that it breaks down, right? Yeah, but what if I really love the person? I mean, what if we are in love, listen, I know it. Mm -hmm. I know it, so it, it should be okay then. Oh, one of the greatest myths of people that, that feel that they love each other is to judge the longevity of the relationship or the value of the relationship by the intensity of the feelings. This feels so intense. I'm so mad. He seems perfect. This is going to last forever. Uh, and because of that, that, that emotional union of hearts, they feel that it can justify any type of union of the bodies. And so you think that the emotions are so strong, it must last forever. And so our bodies can express that yes of forever. Um, but if you're having the gift of exchanging the gift of sex outside of marriage, it's a lie in the language of the body because the body is saying I'm entirely yours physically I could not give to you anything more than I give to, I'm giving to you right now I'm completely yours until I'm completely someone else's and until things wear off and I move on and it, so it's a lie in the language of the body and so if you, you want to be with someone before you're married with them you intercourse um, there's there's two uh, two real uh, key aspects of love. There's the desire for union and the desire for the person's good. And so if you want to sleep with a person, I'd say you've got that desire for union, that's taken care of, that's definitely there, but then you've got the desire for good. And one of these must prevail over the other, and it's the desire for the good. Because if I desire her union with her more than her good, then rape becomes acceptable, because the most important thing is to be one with her. And so, but we've got to realize that the good of her comes before the unity of uh, me with her. Uh, and so being willing to put her soul above all other things and not risk anything that might harm her. If I were with a young lady and she said, you know, Jason, could you go to the kitchen and get me a glass of water? I'd say, sure, hon. I go into the kitchen, 
let's say there's a hundred glasses of water there, and one of them is contaminated with a transparent poison that will kill her, but 99 of them are safe. Now, do I say, well, you know, she's probably not going to die. What are the odds it's going to kill her? I'll bring something to her. Uh, no, I would go back into the room and say, hun, I don't know that my choice for you would be safe, so you're going to have to wait until I know that that decision would be good for you. And so likewise, even if you're not convinced that premarital sex is harmful to a person's body, her future, her soul, you, true love wouldn't take the risk of contaminating the beloved. Society as a whole is really held together by the virtue of chastity.